Hello everyone, and welcome to another SOLIDWORKS Tech Tip from Hawkridge Systems. This is Jacob Ames, Senior Applications Engineer, and in this video we're going to be showing off an interesting technique for developing functional artistic rib geometry and geometric patterns to add a bit of flair to thin designs made from metal, wood, or any other material. In this example, I'm working on a banister for a staircase where the goal is to create an artistic, irregular pattern of organic-shaped cutouts in this panel of structural steel. However, I also want to make sure that the material width between the cutouts remains consistent to ensure structural integrity, and I don't have all day to get this done. So, what are my options in this situation? If you've never attempted a design of this style before, you might consider trying to sketch each of the cutouts using splines, which may seem intuitive at first, but after a few minutes of sketching, you'll find that it becomes nearly impossible to control the spacing between the closed contours. Even if you choose to use lines, arcs, or circles rather than splines, this quickly becomes a very difficult and time-consuming task that requires an immense number of dimensions and relations. So let's scratch that one off the list. You might also consider sketching out the center lines of the web geometry with splines or other sketch entities in order to use a thin extruded boss, which is good in theory, but breaks down at the feature level. In this case, the problem with a thin extruded boss is the behavior at the boundary of our cutout, as the thickness added to the web geometry is added perpendicular to the sketch entities, and doesn't extend all the way to the boundary. This results in both jagged corners, and in some scenarios, zero thickness geometry that may prevent us from even completing the command. Even if you can force this method to work, you'll likely have to follow it up with a fillet feature to break all these sharp corners that are left over, and selecting all those edges won't be very fun. Now the rib command is often good for this type of geometry, but since we have a boundary cutout, using a rib feature here will fail, as there's no geometry on the back side of this design to terminate the rib extrusion, because this is a thin feature. You could probably get creative and force the rib command to work with some workarounds, but fortunately for us, there's a better way. Believe it or not, the vent command is exceptionally good at creating the type of geometry we're going for here. Most SOLIDWORKS users traditionally use the vent command for sheet metal designs, hence the name, but vent actually works very well for thin cutout geometry of any kind, and not just for sheet metal models. The key here is that the sketch used for our boundary cutout needs to be in the same sketch as the web geometry. You can find the vent command in the sheet metal tab at the command manager, or by accessing the insert dropdown, then fastening features. Once active, start by selecting the loop of sketch entities that form the boundary cutout for your design. If you created your sketch on the face that you'll be creating the vent on, the face selection box should already be filled in properly. If not, select the face on which to place the vent here. Draft can also be enabled and applied if necessary. The next input box allows you to specify a fillet radius, which will automatically be applied to all sharp corners in the resulting vent, which is the first significant advantage of this command. Now you can begin selecting the web sketch geometry in the rib selection box to apply material equally in opposite directions, parallel to the vent face. The D1 value box here represents the depth of the ribs, which in most cases should not exceed the thickness of the surface you're applying the vent to. If you're unsure here, I'd recommend using the thickness value of your material. The thickness of my material in this case is 3 8 The D2 box represents the width of the ribs, and you can quickly see how this functions by adjusting the value. Notice how the ribs automatically blend into each other and apply fillets to the sharp corners, all while maintaining consistency throughout the design. You'll also notice that the ribs automatically extend into the surrounding geometry at the cutout interface, meaning you won't have to worry about random jagged corners or zero thickness errors. Spars function in the same fashion as ribs, but provide the capability to use an alternate depth and width for certain selections in the same feature, if desired. Finally, if you have any areas that need to be filled in rather than left open, and this is usually for structural support or possibly artistic flair, you can select closed contour sketch entities to fill in areas that would otherwise be left open by the ribs and spars in the fill in boundary section. And that's all there is to it. With the vent command, you can now get creative with sketch contours to design all sorts of geometric patterns and thin designs while maintaining design intent and efficiency. We hope you enjoyed this tech tip, and if you did, give it a like and let us know how you've been using the vent command in the comments. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.